Hi, everybody. Coming up on 913 on this Friday morning. How you doing today? I'm having a great day so far. Uh, the weather is about to get wild across the area. We're going to see some major changes coming our way, including some building heat into the first part of October, and then what looks to be a pretty pronounced cold front coming through. And I know the weather is very important to you this time of the year, especially when it relates to uh, outdoor activities, uh, hunting going on. I mean, we've got a forecast you need to know about with some major changes changes coming in. So if you could do me a couple of things here, just some housekeeping, let me know where you're watching from in the comments. I've got both streams up right here. I can see where you're watching from. That'll help me out and tailor this forecast to where you are. And also, if you can give this video a like. If you're new to the page, please consider going ahead and subscribing. Uh, follow my Facebook here uh, as we're watching this. I provide you with early warnings of severe weather, any kind of weather outlook coming our way, a reliable forecast you can count on, and a direct approach you won't find anywhere else. And in this case, we're talking about the main major pattern change coming our way, uh, which could lead to a significant cool down uh, along the East Coast. In fact, when I'm looking at this chart, this is the North Atlantic Oscillation. Uh, it, it's a big word for basically the weather pattern, the way the jet stream is going to orient itself. And as we look at where we're at right now, going into October, the North Atlantic Oscillation is trending positive or neutral. However, especially in the wintertime, this means watch out snow. I feel like we're going to be in this situation a lot. I'm going to be a busy man come December, January, February. Uh, we're likely to see some big time snows across the south and the east. Uh, this is going to be a winter to remember, in my opinion, unfortunately, uh, with regard to snow and possibly even ice setups. But uh, more in particular, it's October. We're not worried about that yet. But what we are seeing is the sign that it's going to be really warm going into the first couple of days, week or so of October. But by the time we get to, you see this dip here, it's not something that happens overnight. But when you see this turn negative directly after that's usually a pretty pronounced cool down and a pretty active pattern. And this time of the year, I know that as hot as we're going to be, switching to cold will give us what? Thunderstorms. Yeah, thunderstorms are a risk when you switch the pattern around and severe weather would be a risk. So here we are. I see uh, this dip here. It's probably hard for you to see on your screen, but it, it's small letters. But um, th this is the 10th of October. It's as negative as it's going to be, about negative two and a half, negative three. So that tells me the way the jet stream's oriented would would mean a dip across the East Coast. So a relatively pronounced dip here showing up in the computer models, which would mean to me we're going to be turning colder. Uh, until then, as we look at the weather pattern right now, we are smooth sailing. We've got high pressure. Maybe you wanted another week at the pool, another week out on the lake. Uh, if you're camping, any kind of ball games this weekend, maybe another weekend at the beach. It is absolutely picture perfect when we're talking about weather there. It's going to be very, very nice nice just about anywhere you're going. I see Greer's in the house. I got Williamson in the house. Please continue to let me know where you're watching from. Give this video a like. Give it a share. That'll help me out uh, really with the algorithms there. I, I sure appreciate you. But high pressure is in control, a big ridge across the eastern United States. So that's why we're going to be very dry the first few days of uh, October here. Here we are going into the weekend, into Monday, major ridge. It's sunny from Maine to the northern parts of Florida. Of course, Florida this time of the year, pretty juiced up with some rain. Uh, but look what's building back toward the west. You've got snow in the Rockies. You've got cold air. What's up here is down over there. And let's talk about that. That's a ridge. Now you're looking at the upper parts of the atmosphere. And when I'm forecasting patterns or pattern changes, I start from the top and I work my way down to the surface. So here we are at the top top part of the surface. This is a big ridge here across the eastern United States uh, today, and that's going to lead and dig in. So the higher this pressure gets here, the lower the pressure gets over here. Uh, the atmosphere is always trying to equalize itself. It, it, it's constantly doing that. That's why we study so many physics classes in meteorology school. Uh, here we are, major ridge digging in here across the eastern United States, a major trough over toward California, big time snow from the mountains of California up through the Rockies. I mean, it's big time, big time cold there. Um, the pattern wants to try to correct itself and even out. So the pressure here is uh, starting to lower, the pressure here is starting to rise. So it, it gets relatively boring uh, uh, for a few days, fourth, fifth, sixth, still dealing with dry weather across the East Coast. Look at that lower pressure across the uh, East Coast of Florida. That could be a little, little piece of energy to watch. Looks like it gets close, but not close enough. But look at this bigger piece of energy from the northern branch of the jet stream diving in by the time we get to October 6th, 7th, 8th. 
it not only dives in, one piece comes in, then another reinforcing shot comes in, and it just kind of digs in here. How far south does this get is going to be the question. Uh, but either way, it looks like by the time we get to next weekend, we're dealing with a pattern shift happening. And this means major cool down here across the East Coast. Yes, October looks to be warm as an average, especially to start. In fact, if you were to average out all the temperatures through October, we may end up above average just because of how warm it's going to be the first few days, 84, 85 for highs. Uh, that'll kind of skew the numbers a little bit. But here we are getting toward next Sunday, next Monday, uh, we could have a much different kind of pattern when compared to where we're at right now. Instead of being in the 80s, we'll probably be in the 60s, maybe even 50s for highs across many in the East Coast. Let's look at what that specifically looks like because could we be talking our first snow? Not for many, but you go up toward the upper peninsula of Michigan, Minnesota, Wisconsin. I mean, we could be dealing with some snow, certainly in Canada, and that's beneficial. That's that's what we need to happen this time of the year to get that uh, snowpack going there because that establishes the pattern going into November. So, uh, you know, it's, it's amazing how God does things and how God gets this situation, the weather pattern in order, step by step. And, uh, you know, what happens in October dictates what happens in November. And, you know, establishing that snowpack is what makes the cold air transport farther south in the November, December time frame. So everything's starting to happen according to plan here. And, and look at this, by October 9th, we got a pretty good snowpack across parts of Canada. Whereas right now, we've got nada, nothing, no snow to snow, no snow to snow. Pretty amazing if you ask me. All right, let's look at the GFS temperatures here for the East Coast going throughout the next week. I'm going to back it up here and show you your weekend because we are cooking, folks. Uh, some of these models showing 86, 87 from Anderson to Greenville to Atlanta, 89 in Orlando, 91 in Miami. You go toward uh, Louisiana, New Orleans, uh, into the northern part of Louisiana. We're talking 92, 93. It's going to be hot Saturday and Sunday. I mean, this is not football. Football weather. Look at this 97 along the Mississippi, 94 in Memphis, 90 in Nashville, 84 in Atlanta, 80 in Charlotte. It's, it's going to be a hot weekend. For the Northeast, you're sitting pretty in the mid 70s, but that's a bit warmer than we should be this time of the year. This warmth, as I just kind of map out next week, uh, as you can see here, this is Tuesday. We're still cooking, we're still sitting warm across the area here. So this would be 85 degrees, 86. I mean, here we are. All right, now you're starting to see the blues. There we go. Blue is colder. Uh, the brighter colors would be warmer, of course. Here we are next Friday. I'll pause it here. Friday night football games a week from today are going to be hot in the southeast, going to be mild in the northeast. But look what's building toward the Midwest. Highs in the 50s, highs in the 40s. It's a coming, folks. Here we go. And that may lead to severe weather. In fact, let me just peek. I'm going to go back to the temperature. I'm going to just peek for a second. One little snippet here. Let's go back to Friday. You know, it's one of those situations where this thing's moving so fast, it may not have enough time to grab enough instability and storm fuel and send it north. And that's what I'm seeing and that's what I'm hoping for. But anytime you switch the pattern from hot to cold, usually a side effect of that is severe weather, unfortunately. I see Greenville's in the house. I see Liberty's in the house. I see Madison County's in the house. Hi, Boone. Boone's watching right now. Got Charlotte. We've got Myrtle Beach. We've got Fort Myers. We've got Miami. Where else are you guys watching from today? Orlando's in the house. Pensacola, Panama City Beach, Destin, Atlanta. We've got Montgomery in the house. Hi. Thank you guys for tuning in. Philadelphia's in the house. Okay. Welcome to the conversation. Okay, here we are moving out through time, the severe weather threat just may not materialize because how fast this cold air is moving in. That's a good thing. But let me show you and, and, and rewind this back to temperatures because you're saying, okay, when's it going to get cool? When can I drink that pumpkin spice latte? When can I wear my fall clothes that are sitting out in my closet? I'm not speaking to my wife. I'm speaking to my wife. She may be watching right now. I'm getting in trouble. Uh, <laughs> She's got some good outfits ready, uh, but you can't wear them right now. I mean, it's just too hot. Uh, it's just way too hot. Um, I've been there, done that. You know, wearing wearing out to to, to apple picking or, or to the corn mazes, and, and you're trying to be fall like, but you're sitting there sweating in your flannel. That's no fun. So when will you not be sweating in your flannel? Well, it looks like next Sunday we're still waiting on the cooler air in the upstate of South Carolina, Georgia, Florida. It's still quite warm, but here it comes. 
It looks like Sunday night into Monday, probably our first bout with the 40s in the upstate of South Carolina, Charlotte, Raleigh, waking up to the 40s for the first time this season, and then waking up to 30 or below. So the first freeze up here toward New York, up through Maine, up through New Hampshire and Vermont, certainly the first frost from about here north, certainly the first freeze from about here north, which is you know, on course with time. you got 20s showing up here from Minnesota, uh, back through Wisconsin, UP and Michigan. But here we go into to deeper into the future. So it's still going to be comfortable here as we go into uh, the time frame of Monday afternoon. Uh, we've got uh, the heat building, warmth building here, and then here comes some cooler air, progressively trying to get cooler. Doesn't quite make it all the way to Florida, so to speak. That doesn't mean you're not going to enjoy cooler weather, just not going to be as chilly as our friends in the north. So here we are back to the 80s for highs. So it's a short-lived cool down, but nonetheless, uh, there's a couple of days here where I could see a Sunday, Monday, Sunday, let's see, let's go back here. Saturday afternoon, we're in the 80s in the Carolinas and Georgia. We fast forward here to Sunday. We're in the upper 70s. By Monday, we're waking up to the 40s. We're topping out in the 60s and 70s. So that's kind of our cool down here. And then we kind of even back out. I don't see any more major dips in the jet stream. May get wedged in a time or two here. It looks like going toward the middle of the month. This would be Saturday, the second weekend of uh, of fall here. Fall for Greenville's going on. A lot going on around town, so that would mean that would uh, be, be be welcome. So how about the leaves? Uh, gave you an update on this yesterday. I just love this map here by the friends at explorefall.com. Uh, really gives you an overview of where the leaves are changing right now. Some really good cover from Maine to to New Hampshire to Vermont into New York. And you got the upper parts of Wisconsin and Minnesota and of course the Rockies. There's some spotty color in the Western Carolinas, but let's map out where we Will be a week from right now. If you like to check out the leaves, you like to go up and an apple pick, you like to do the the fall things, right? Uh, it, it looks like your time to do that is next weekend. Look at how the color expands out from now until next week. We go from low color to peak color in Maine, Vermont, New Hampshire, New York, and you get a lot more color to where most of Western North Carolina at this point start to see at least some color here. Let's zoom in a little bit to the East Coast um, and go out a little bit more. So a lot of color beginning to show up by the time we get into next week. So if you're looking to see those leaves, the upstate's probably not going to have much color this time next week. That's usually toward the end of the month. But you go into Western North Carolina, you're going to start to see a lot more yellows and reds. And this year, folks, this year's looking good. Uh, we've had a dry end to summer, a dry beginning to fall. That means the colors are going to be so vibrant. Um, you get the muted kind of boring colors. I mean, it's still pretty, but but they're a little more browns and, and like orange and darker reds versus the brighter colors when it's dry. So uh, when it's really, really wet, you get muted colors. When it's when it's not wet, it's dry. Uh, you get beautiful colors. It just means it's a shorter season though. So those leaves are going to go into survival and try to kick them off the trees here before too long uh, because of how dry it is. All right, in the tropics, we've got something to talk about here because we've got what's called the Fujiwara effect happening right now with a pair of systems. You've got in the tropics right here, you've got Felipe and you've got Rene, both of which are kind of dancing around each other right now. Uh, hurricanes are not uh, you know, like you'd see in the movies. They don't want to combine into one super system. They actually uh, want to oppose each other. They want their own environment. Um, so when tropical systems are beside of each other, they often rob each other of available moisture, of available energy, of available heat content in the ocean. They don't like it. So when a more dominant system, in this case, it's Felipe, um, it's going to slingshot. And, and anytime I think of slingshot, I think of Ricky Bobby. I'm not sure why that happens. Uh, maybe in my mind, but uh, maybe you can help me out with that. But <laughs> Felipe is about the slingshot Rene around it. So uh, a lot of kids will ask me at schools, do they combine into one super hurricane? No. It's interesting though, uh, but oftentimes they're like two magnets. They want to oppose each other. You turn a magnet opposite, it's going to kind of try to push it away. That's what looks to happen here as we look at the computer models. The smaller, more compact, stronger storm is actually uh, Rene, but it gets caught up in the low pressure of Felipe. And look what happens here. So the two are kind of doing a little dance 
doing a little one-two step here. Uh, how funny is that? Uh, doing a little dance here. And the Fujiwara effect, it's actually named after the brilliant Japanese meteorologist that kind of studied the phenomenon of this and how it impacts hurricane forecasting. Uh, but but yeah, think of Ricky Bobby and the slingshot method in NASCAR. Okay, so, so here sits uh, Felipe, just basically stationary. And I mean stationary, moving at two, three, four miles per hour, whereas uh, Renee is trying to get going. Renee, why do I keep calling it Renee? It's Rena. Rena, Rena, Rena. I don't know why I have that name stuck in my head so bad. Rena, R-I-N-I, -I, all right? Fujiwara effect. Yeah, it, it's different, uh, but it, it's neat. It's, 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 it's a really neat phenomenon that you study. Look at how it slingshots it. I'm going to fast forward. I'm going to do it a couple of times. There it goes. So you saw how Rena here, stronger than Felipe, but look what happens when Felipe slingshots Reno around it. Remember, hurricanes have counterclockwise flow, so this is caught up in the slingshot method, or the or the basically the currents around Felipe, and boom, it shoots Rena, uh, Rena around it right there, and then and then Felipe becomes strong. I mean, Philippe's barely hanging on for life right now. We're talking a uh, thousand millibar low, disorganized. Uh, Rena's actually stronger, but look what happens around the bend you go, and then all of a sudden Philippe becomes stronger and moves to the north as, as a major hurricane. Uh, we do have a lowering pressure here to watch out for toward the end of next week. You got that big trough digging in off the east coast. That kind of steers anything away from us. And, and honestly, folks, as we're entering what's a very vulnerable time of tropics for us, I just don't see anything forming for the next week or so, uh, at least that would threaten the United States. You do have to start looking out for the homebrew stuff, these old fronts that are off the coast as they sit there and try to spin up. Could give us some trouble down the road, but overall, I'm not too concerned about what I'm seeing right now. And as you get toward the latter half of October, what helps us out is we finally have those cold fronts coming off the coast that'll push this stuff on out, and we end up with um, enough fronts to keep things away from us. So that's the good news there. Folks, I really enjoyed talking to you here. Here we are, 9.30. Uh, looking forward to today. Uh, I actually had the day off from TV, so picking the kids up from school. We're going to do some fun things. Uh, wife and I are going to lunch here in just a little bit. Just looking forward to a good Friday, fantastic Friday of weather. Just really, really nice around town, and I hope you guys can enjoy it. So the simple takeaway here in conclusion is it's going to be really hot this weekend. We're talking low to mid 80s for highs. Some areas are going to get closer to 90 degrees in the southeast. That's unheard of. Um, and we're going to be warm and dry all the way through this upcoming week. Cool mornings, warm afternoons, um, uh, picturesque if you ask me. But going into next weekend, uh, there will be some storms in the southeast for some, but it's not going to be widespread. Thankfully, right now, I'm cautiously optimistic about that. But we are going to be dealing with a more pronounced cool down, it looks like, next weekend. Doesn't look to last, but at least we'll cool down a little bit. And the tropics right now are behaving, but we got some interesting stuff going on with Rena and Felipe. So thank you for tuning in. If you're new to the channel here, if you're new to following me on Facebook, Instagram, uh, please consider going ahead and subscribing to my channels. I uh, really do appreciate you guys for watching right now and, and enjoying the live broadcast. Uh, you are uh, uh, really fun. It, it's a blast talking uh, about weather with you every day. So would appreciate it if you're new here. Go ahead and give me a follow. We'll keep you posted around the clock, folks. Hope you have a great Friday.